Welcome into the Recipe Podcast, Celebrity Secrets to a Successful Life. I'm your host, Chef Charles Carroll. What a great day. What a great show we have here in 2020. We are, uh, this is our first show of the new year. Are you guys excited? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. Can, I, can, I can tell. Back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Very good. Very good. Jay's on it. The equipment is working. And uh, yeah, so this is good. It looks to be a promising 2020, I would say. So far. Yeah, yeah. And I think Aaron and I, I think we get the memo, so we're, 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 we're our uniforms today. Yeah, I guess yeah, we match. We, we match. In a way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jay apparently didn't follow protocol, but uh, that's okay. So, um, yeah, 2020, the show's, uh, we're, we're working on on uh, changing up the shows a little bit. We'll probably get into that a little bit. We don't need to talk too much about it today, but, but Christian has moved on. I'm sure he'll be back few times or several times i'm sure he'll be back but um he has moved on to a new gig and new experience and we wish him well and i think that um <clears throat> i'm sure he'll be back several times this year but he'll come crawling back yeah yeah <laughs> but he's got <laughs> a new he's mm-hmm. got a new gig and uh, he's he's excited about that and i think he's getting ready to jump on a plane tomorrow uh, to chile so so that's good and um the bobbit is on her way to dallas apparently she didn't get the memo so really? yeah yeah so she's on a little uh, weekend vacay so but monica you're doing all right yeah you're, are you all fighter for rockets or what what's going on anything mm-hmm. in particular or you just just it's doing just the like red the color. Yeah? yeah yeah i know you like the red yeah <laughs> your nails look beautiful by the way thank you yeah <laughs> you didn't mean that no i did though do you like your nails yeah of course yeah, yeah. thank you so. they go with their eyes <laughs> <laughs> really a little yeah. too much partying last night what? maybe yeah no that's not what i meant i just uh, meant that they you know all right it's one ensemble you know okay it, it, it works and she's got the oh, chucks thanks. on she makes it yeah. work yeah she's got mm-hmm. the red chucks on yeah jay you doing all right oh yeah how you f- how you feeling about 2020 jay i'm feeling good yeah it's, it's, yeah it's already proving to be very busy yeah i see that i see that a lot yeah. going on we went from being a mediocre week next week to being like really busy yeah like within a day or two so that kind of sucked all of a sudden but but yeah. the family life is good you had a good holiday oh yeah yeah definitely uh, how about you aaron yeah, it was great. Yeah, so you uh, went out to California with Christian, and you guys uh, had a good time out there? Yeah, you know, I tell people there's two things I like. I like traveling with friends, and then I like traveling alone. So I did both. Hmm. I, I was with uh, I was with them in San Diego and had a blast, and then I spent a few days, I think about three days, by myself in, in L.A. So, um, why, do you, why do you like traveling alone? I mean, it, it's just fun. Not You don't have to depend on anyone to right. wake up at a certain time. You can... You know, I like to I like to plan out my day very, um, plan out the things that I do. But then once once it begins, I just sort of improvise and, and do things that I that mm-hmm. I enjoy. Um, it, it it's just fun. Like you go to a restaurant by yourself. I mean, of course it's fun to go with other people. But sometimes it's nice just to be on your own. You go mm-hmm. for a walk. You can do some thinking, do some reading. Mm-hmm. Um, so what'd you do? Tell us about your day uh, in in L.A. You said um, L.A. right? Yeah, in yeah. L. In L.A. So. Um, I started off in the morning. I went to a, a dim sum place because I heard because that, that's something I really enjoy. When I went to a wedding in Hong Kong a few years ago, that that's one of my favorite things was was dim sum, the, mm-hmm. the hot tea and then all the different dumplings and the I don't even know what anything is called, but just mm-hmm. all those little dishes. Mm-hmm. So there was a little place there, um, and I ran into there was a guy sitting there by himself, and and he uh, an older Filipino gentleman, and and he he was drinking some or he was eating some kanji, which I never had before, mm-hmm. with fish and and ginger and and. When they served it to him, he he made a little bowl for me, and we just started we just started talking, and then he told me about another place to go check out. So later, I went and checked out the other place uh, that I really enjoyed. But I spent most of the day at the museums. I thought it was called the Broad Museum, but it's actually Broad, Eli hmm. Broad or Ellie Broad. He's a billionaire. He opened this art museum, all this Andy Warhol and and Basquiat and Jeff Koons and all these real great modern artists. Um, and then there was another museum across the street called Amoka. And so I was just walking around downtown L.A., all the different museums and the cathedral. And, and then you turn a corner and you see the Hollywood sign. And mm. it's, it's, it's kind of it's cool when, mm. when, when um, you never really visited L.A. Mm. before. And, and you're driving. I mean, they have highways just like we do. <laughs> I-10, but they call it the 10. But when you're on their highways, you see, you see mountains. And you see, I mean, it, it's, it's, like, it's like nothing else. I mean, yeah. now, I, now I can understand why people want to live in California. Mm. Why they're willing to pay the taxes. Why mm. they're willing to put up with a lot of things, um, the mountains, the beaches, and all that. And uh, at night, somebody recommended I go to the comedy store. So, you know, Joe Rogan and all these guys are talking about the comedy store. A bunch of comedians, famous comedians, they have Netflix specials and all that, and they live in L.A. And 
any night of the week. I mean, it's open 24-7, right? Any night of the week, they just show up at the comedy store and they do a, a quick 15-minute set. So you buy a ticket, it's like 20 bucks. You show up at 8.30 or 10.30. I showed up to the, ar- the early show, the, the 8.30 show, and you don't really know who's performing. Right. And it's just one person after another just shows up, does 15 minutes, and then they leave. And and then, you know, if somebody's really recognizable, like Bill Burr, he showed up. and No way. Were you there? Yeah, of course. And everybody went nuts when he showed up. Wow. Because um, he wasn't on the on the list, but... I mean, he looked like he just walked over there. I mean, he probably... That's what they do, yeah. Yeah, he probably lives around... I mean, it's in West Hollywood. He lives there or Beverly Hills or whatever, and he can just show up whenever, and he has a, a whole set of jokes, and it was just action-packed. Um, and there was, what a star he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's great at looking at things that are going on in modern culture and, and making jokes about them, and and um, at, at, at one point, he thinks that he, you think that he's on your side. You know, he's supporting whatever issue you're, you're on. And then he flips it. You know, I mean, he, he's, he's really great. And there was, a, there was a guy named Argus Hamilton mm-hmm. who uh, was a lot older. I mean, he might have been 70 years old or something. And he came out, and, and he was his jokes were very much like you might see, the, you know, in the 70s and 80s, that kind of – I think it was, he was on Johnny Carson mm. in wow. the 80s. So I found a YouTube video because I never heard of him before, but I saw this. I saw this little show he did, and and a lot of his jokes are topical because he writes for newspapers too. So he found a little thing about how cocaine was legal in the United States from whatever it was, 1887 to 1903, and how much we accomplished as a country during that time. <laughs> we conquered oh the God. West. We beat the Spanish. <laughs> we took over the Philippines. Oh, all of these awesome. things, and, yeah. and how successful we were. He made a whole joke about that. Then I went. I went and looked at him on YouTube. And there was a show from 83, and I think it was Johnny Carson. I can't remember who it was. And, and he looked so young, you know, blonde hair and all of that, and he was, he was telling jokes. And, and apparently he's been at the comedy store for since then for like 30 years. He's just been coming no, good for several him. nights a week. And, and then uh, Whitney, Whitney Cummings, she showed up for about 15 minutes. She had some good jokes. Because um, I don't know very many female comedians that, yeah. that, I, really, that I really enjoy watching on you know, HBO or Netflix or whatever, but... She really made me laugh. She was talking about the internet and privacy, and and um, it, was, it was a great experience. I mean, it's a really crappy little yeah. cellar, you know. It's, yeah. it's it's not a fancy place at all. It's kind of run down, and they're very you can't fit a bunch of people in there. Mm. But you're you're sitting right there next to the comedian. Then Tony Hinchcliffe oh, was wow. there the next night. The oh, one, no. We saw him at, yeah, at yeah. your. I, I almost went the next night just to see him. Um, yes. It should have been really cool. Yeah. <laughs> He was, he was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw like two minutes of his no, stuff. No, <laughs> I think no. I thought I felt like I, I I thought we saw about fifteen twenty minutes of it. But anyway, yeah, we were in line too long, mm-hmm. just to take care of you guys though. That's true. Yeah, that's you know, so. Well, good on you for that, man. That was pretty cool. That uh, I could get that. You know, I, I I've traveled a lot and and so much so that I'm probably uh, I don't know what do you call it. Uh, a stuck up traveling now because I, I don't like traveling. I don't like mm-hmm. waiting lines. I don't like you know. I just don't like airports. I don't like parking. I don't. <laughs> it's the worst. Traveling's the worst. Yeah, right? I don't. I don't like. I don't enjoy any of it. And um, and when I when I get there, I like to go to point A to point B. You know, I like to go from you know, I get out of the car. I want to get to the gate. You know, I want to go to the lounge. I want to go to whatever, but I don't want to wait in line. And and uh, and then and then uh, you know, if, if you don't get. You know, I, I don't get business anymore because I, I don't travel enough. But I traveled when I traveled a lot. There's like four years in a row I was traveling 125,000 miles a year, and um, so I was. What is that? It's a 1K they call it for United. And then when you're not that, you're like really pissed. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you don't have that status, and then you gotta, then you gotta stay in long uh, in line longer. So I, yeah, I don't know. I just don't enjoy it anymore. But um, yeah, but it, I, but getting uh, talking about traveling alone i kind of get that you know you don't have to wait you know or or so you know just wait on anything you know if i want to get up i get up if i want to go have breakfast i go have breakfast if i want to sleep in I sleep. you know what i mean you, yeah. you just kind of do your own thing but but monica likes to travel yeah i like to travel i get that <clears throat> i like to travel with like one or two people though i don't like traveling in like big groups because then you have to decide on where everybody wants to go and then yeah like you said what time everybody wants to get up and do stuff no, I don't like that. Yeah, you want to be with a couple of people who, who are sort into of, it. Yeah, they're on, they're on yeah. the same same wavelength as you. Exactly. Right? So twenty twenty, what's what's everybody's re- resolution? New Year's resolution? Monica, you got New Year's re- resolution? Mm-hmm. I guess just growth as a person. You want to get taller? Everybody says that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, just like as a person. Yeah. 
yeah and learn more mm -hmm. about a lot of stuff yeah so. are you learning now yeah yeah are you having fun yeah uh, actually I'm Jay do you want to grow this year yeah yeah <laughs> a couple inches at least yeah, yeah. More, yeah. What, what's your resolutions uh, try to be more understanding <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with the, your your new family, does it? No. No. <laughs> but it wouldn't hurt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it helps. And you? Um, Aaron? Well, since you mentioned being taller, that would be a good. Yeah, you, you like that? You want that too? And I had a friend who went to Eastern Europe, and and they made them taller. They do a thing where they break your legs and then they extend them. You have Are a you friend that? that did this in high school? Yeah, he graduated with me in high school, and um, and. Um, Oh my god yeah and, and that was his thing he just wanted to be taller and he was about my height and and he went to eastern europe i forget where it was like romania or something like that and russia and they, they, really have, <laughs> they have a process where they break your legs and then they separate the bones and then your bones sort of grow back and fill in that that space how and long does that take it was about six months he was in in a hospital bed Fuck, how god. much <laughs> it wasn't i mean it, it wasn't i guess that expensive when you think about it because it was you know a, a cheaper hospital but he said it was a really nice place everybody was nice he came back and he could speak this slavic language um and and he was a little taller than me about how point. much taller about an inch that's it man yeah. so six months for an inch an inch and a quarter or something like that yeah it wasn't it wasn't that much i mean how much that to me is is kind of a miracle that you can grow an inch you know, by, by in six months. I mean, and then I guess you go back the next year, you get another inch or two. I mean, oh, I is that it? I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I think there's a limit because. Yeah, I think there's, a, you know, your, your your leg can only be, you know, if wherever they cut you, I'm <coughs> sure it's at your calf and the yeah. top parts. It's going to start it's looking like weird when your calf is starting to be long, yeah. much longer than your yeah. top part of your leg. Well, yeah. I, think, I think that, I mean, I think when that person turns 55, 60, they're going to, be feeling them knees a little bit i think or something i don't know man I, I don't see that as being a good surgery yeah in general i mean you try to avoid surgery as much as possible when i saw him he came back and he had this it almost looked like braces but in his leg with screws in them and and they left it in there so that he and, and they called up a hospital here and said hey in a few weeks you know he can walk and he can be back in the united states but in a few weeks can you just remove them or like you know, if he's gonna date a taller girl at night, you just kind of reach down and kind of turn the knob yeah, a couple exactly. times. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was a movie about that where a guy he was like he, he had his legs oh, lengthened. I mean, it, to, I to mean, to be somebody, to pretend to, to, to be nasty. somebody else. He should have. He should have probably tried thinking about you know bigger platform shoes or something. I mean, I would have started there. What was the movie um, with? Uh, the FBI guy, um, who's the very first FBI. Oh, J. Edgar Hoover? Yeah. yeah Did yeah. you see the movie? <laughs> no. When was that? Uh, probably two, three years ago. Um, he, was a, he, had a, he had a thing about being short, and so he, he had his desk built on a one-foot platform. Okay. Or, or, so, or, or it, it done in such a way that if you walk into his office, you don't know about it. So if he stands up from the desk, he's a tall guy. I mean, it wasn't a one-foot platform, but it was – so no one really – you know, if you come in the office, you didn't know who he was. Right. He would stand up, and, and you know, he would be tall, but you wouldn't know it from the other side. So So it's like a ramp? You, uh, No, no. There's like a small like a, a small platform behind his desk. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so when you stood up from mm -hmm. the desk, he was – He was tall. Noticeably taller than the person that was meeting with him. But you should watch that movie. You should. In fact, it's called. Um, who? Uh, I think it's called J. Edgar Hoover. I think you would love that movie. You know, obviously, all true. He was a gay guy, right? Well, I think he liked dressing like a woman. Yeah, he was a gay guy. <laughs> like wearing. He liked wearing makeup and stuff. You should watch that movie. Okay. It is crazy. It's a. It's a. It's a crazy movie, but but good. So. So there you have it. So uh, 2020, and uh, and we're starting it with a war. <laughs> it's not a war. It's not a war. <laughs> well, I mean, so someone blows up a building, someone else blows up some generals, and then someone else fires some rockets and shoots down a plane. That sounds like a war. What 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 defines a war? Well, I mean, for a war, there, there's got to be an ongoing operation. Like this is more just um, little attacks here and there. Um, you know, taking out a guy here. 
you know, someone getting bombed there. <laughs> just shooting some people. Couple, yeah, just a couple of around. accidents. And, and, and it's, um, it's more strategery, as we say. Strategery. Yeah, that's really what it is. <laughs> All right. More so than a war. I mean, it, the last, whatever, three or four presidents, almost every one of them has started a war. But uh, so far, I don't think we really have. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, once we actually have soldiers on the ground in Iran and marching 2,000 miles to the capital— then we'll then we'll call that a war. So so, I'm trying to remember when they when they blew up the uh, embassy. Did, did didn't they kill? Wasn't there one casualty? Didn't they kill one of our people? No, I don't think so. Oh wait, no, there was a contractor. Yeah, there was a contractor. I thought someone was, died. Someone, in that. yeah, an American who who died. But that's a problem to me. Yes, but after we retaliated and killed their their general guy, no Americans have died since. That's what I mean when I say it's not a war because basically the president acted. No, it's not like they didn't try. <laughs> they they, no, they, they killed twenty five Canadians. <laughs> right, but that was on the that was on the plane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so and they say that was an accident. Like they were trying to they were trying to launch it. I'm sure it was. I'm sure yeah. it was. Well, it always is. They're idiots. So 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 this is what happens, right? Like they they want to retaliate, but they know they can't start a war with us because we'll we'll destroy them, right? So they don't want to start a war with us, but they want to show their people that hey, um, we are we're willing to to fight the United States. So they launched all these missiles at us, but they called us ahead. So they called up Switzerland, because Switzerland is sort of the go-between, right? They called them up. They called up a few places and said, hey, let the Americans know these are the bases that we're going to bomb, um, get their people out of the way. And so they, they sent five missiles at, at our bases, and they blew them up nearby. And and look, their missiles are very accurate. They, can, they could have killed a lot of Americans if they wanted to, but they didn't want to. They just wanted to show that, hey, we launched some missiles. Are you sure? Are you convinced yes. of that? Oh, yeah. They, they've got really good military technology. They How do you know paid for them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gave them to them. Yeah. How do you know that? Well, because we've, we've seen that. I mean, like, like, like Jay said, I mean, we've, we've, uh, we have a lot of intelligence that, that shows. And I think in the past they have, they have killed people when they wanted to. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like they tried to kill 5,000 American soldiers and they killed zero. Right? That wouldn't make any sense. Or they tried to kill 500 people and they killed zero. I mean, they killed zero people because they didn't want to kill anybody. Because they knew if they killed, if they ended up killing fifty or sixty American soldiers, that really would have started. A they war. would have wiped out. The, we would have right. wiped them out. And, and so, and so, they they called ahead. And, and there's lots of different. Can't you make the case that that they don't know what they're doing, and they and they fired those missiles, and they missed everything, and they shot accidentally shot down a plane? That's fucked up, man. No, they, they, I, they shot down a plane. Yeah, I mean, so. If they're that accurate and they really know what they're doing, you're not shooting down a plane, and you don't put it in an area where there's 50 planes taken off. I think they were going to use that as an excuse to, to, to blame us for. No, no, no. And it's, it's, it's out today. It's yeah. out today. It's con- it's confirmed, and they admit it to Well, them. yeah, no, but, but, but a lot want, of people want, are saying they, they're yeah, they want to blame us for that jetliner coming down. Regardless, they screwed up. They hit a plane. I mean, they, unless it wasn't an accident. I mean, no, they admit it today. That, that it was an accident? Uh, that, they, that they shot it down and it was an accident, but it's our fault. Because originally when it happened, they said that um, they don't know what happened. The plane caught fire and, and nobody knows what happened. But I guess they knew all along, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, know, I don't know. They may not have known right away. but, but uh, No, if they wanted to start a full-scale war with us, if they wanted to really no, attack I get our that. bases, they, they could have. I mean, I, 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 I get that, but my, I guess my point is, um, like, I don't think they suck. I don't think their military is, is that bad. I mean, all they've done in the past 40 years is invest in their military, their technology. They've gotten tons of, tons of help from Russia. I mm. mean, Russia is like their, their number one friend, right? So, um, I don't think, I don't think they really, they, they want to save face. They want to act like, Hey, we're a big, tough government, anti-American the last thing they want is to start a full-scale war with us mm. you know I, that's that's what that's what it looks like to me um, i'm uh i have a, a meeting in russia uh this year <laughs> nice yeah i don't know i don't know about going there but oh it'll be fine and i mean i've you've been to russia before yeah right? yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's awesome and it's amazing you yeah. know it's just like it's it's pretty surreal to me i mean i was there 20 years ago 22 years ago Imagine it back then, right? I mean, the black market. And I, mean, I don't know if I told this, said this before, but it's beautiful and it's and it's filthy and it's and it's, you know, it's. There's the extremes are so back then. I mean, 
you'd see these palaces and then you'd you'd be walking down the street and there's people everywhere you know in, in line for weeks and weeks and weeks for bread you know and and the black market everybody's trying to trying to steal from you everybody's trying to steal something and and uh, the, the mafia was everywhere, and they weren't hiding. They 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 have special lights on the car, and they have special lanes in the road that they use. And then oh, that, wow. and that's the mafia, and right. that's the who they official mafia. And there's like five or six Mercedes with the I can't remember if it's a green or a blue light. I think it was a yeah, blue it's light. It's called the police. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's five or six Mercedes parked in front of every single hotel with a blue light on, them, and that's the mafia. And uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was pretty cool. It was yeah. So we're, we're supposed to be heading over there. Uh, this year, so, but um, yeah. So, what do you think about Trump's decisions? I don't want to get into politics too much, but uh, apparently they're saying they're backing down now. Well, yeah, I don't think he he ever wanted a war, right? I mean, people are making it sound like he's this crazy lunatic who wants to start a war. Um, he's, I think he's just made some very precise decisions. Do like, you agree with it about uh, whacking the general? Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's. You can compare it to to. Uh, Bin Laden, you know, taking him brother? out. Yeah. Um, I think the people who have a problem with that, yeah. mostly it's it's uh, it's because he's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you have something called Trump derangement syndrome, yeah, yeah. which means that when Trump does something that other presidents have done in the past, people go nuts over it, yeah. right? But because it's him doing it, it's 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 a terrible thing. Like if, if Obama was president and he took out this guy, it would just go down as oh he took out another you know big. Uh, a big wig, a terrorist supporter, or whatever. I don't have um, a problem. I don't have a problem whatsoever whacking them. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna hit our building and, and kill somebody inside it, yeah. I, I mean, fuck yeah. I was yeah. so impressed that that we did it. Like the next day, we know where he is. We're gonna take him out. You yeah, know? apparently they've been working on this for years. Like yeah, yeah. like ever since even even when Obama was president, they've been tracking him and and discussing. I'm sure we do it. Yeah, should, we, yeah. should we take should we take him out or not? Um, and. They found the right time to do it, and, and a lot of people don't realize that people think that that's what started everything. Like everything was mm. fine and peaceful and everything, and then Trump just got got yeah, yeah. in. And but there's a whole history before that, um, and everyone's saying this is going to explode into World War Three. And no. so far, it doesn't look like. Again, after that, after that action, not a single American died. So we'll see. I mean, there's tomorrow, and there's next week, and there's mm. months that come ahead of us. But it could be that this this ends up setting sort of a new um, a new normal. And yeah. from here, we, we get to some diplomacy or whatever, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, it's certainly a good uh, distraction for uh, Trump and uh, uh, to uh, uh, with all the impeachment bullshit. And yeah, I mean, one thing that we know is that when presidents, when, when wars begin or when, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people get closer to, they become more American yeah, yeah, yeah. and more supportive. Yeah, it's perfect for him, yeah. Right, and so. I have um, a nice clip there, seeing how we're talking about Trump. Yeah. A little bit of whack the dog, huh? I like that movie, Wag the Dog. All right, sorry. Right, see. What's the President Trump has been resisting calls for over three though. years. You can put that headset on, you can hear it. Last week, Trump said he would love to release them, but can't because of a fake audit that definitely does not exist. And he just kept repeating the same words over and over. While I'm under audit, listen to this. I won't do it. If I'm not under audit, I would do it. I had no problem with it. But while I'm under audit, I would not give my taxes. Uh, there's no law whatsoever. Now, I will say this. Uh, I would love to give them, but I'm not going to do it while I'm under audit. It's very simple. Trump <laughs> answered the question. He sounds like a scientist insisting on giving a TED talk despite a recent massive head wound. <laughs> a black hole is a hole that's black, and it's black because it's a hole where there's no light, because it's black and it's a hole, and that's why they call it a black hole. Dr. Trump, maybe we could finish this up tomorrow, but I haven't even gotten to the black hole part yet. <laughs> also, this part right here is the best part. Now, I will say this. Uh, I would love to give them, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he tees it up like he's about to switch gears <clears throat> and then just repeats himself again. It's like if you ask someone to marry you and they said, well, it's awfully soon and I'm a little afraid of commitment, but I will say this, no. <laughs> that the audit excuse is a transparent lie. Trump has, in the last few months, moved on to a new excuse that his tax returns are too complicated for people to understand. That's what he said last this year is after good Democrats one. won the we'll midterms and gained the power to request them. 
As I've told you, they're under audit. They have been for a long time. They're extremely complex. People wouldn't understand them. They're done by among the biggest and best law firms in the country. Same thing with the accounting firms. The accountants are a very, very large, powerful firm from the standpoint of uh, respect. They're highly respected. Big firm. A, a great law firm. Where you, would, you know it very well. They do these things. They put them in. But people don't understand tax returns. And it is a very big company, far bigger than you would even understand. But it's a, it's a great company. But it's big. And it's complex. And it's uh, probably feet high. All right, first of all. <laughs> OK, you can shut it off. <laughs> it's feet high. He's made the world pretty good for comedy. Well, welcome in, Ryden Braden. Ryden's coming in for our for uh, chef. You're coming in for our, our next show. So I, all our listeners on the Unplugged show, make sure you listen to the Gourmet Club Live as uh, our guest is going to be Ryden. So we, you can leave your headset on if you want. You can uh, just keep it away from the mic when you're, like, right there. Okay, Sorry. good. Okay. <laughs> no, you good. And, um, and uh, yeah, and there you go. Just flip that down. Yeah, I'm not used to this. <laughs> There we go. There you cool. go. All right. So, yeah. So, you can be part two show. So, um, feet high. What do you think about that, Aaron? Tax rate. Well, yeah, probably. I mean. <laughs> is that, is is that, that or, the, or the building that the, that the, uh, that the law firm works in? <laughs> I, I think he's talking about the stack oh, okay. of, yeah, the yeah, stack yeah, of yeah. papers. That's but, just, but it, I mean. It's my joke, man. He probably doesn't go on TurboTax and do his taxes. No, he's maybe not. A, yeah. bunch of, a bunch of stuff. But some people are saying the reason he doesn't want people to see his taxes is because he doesn't have as much money as as people think. Like, he's not as rich as people think. Mm. Um, and so once people look at it, they'll say, oh, wow, he doesn't really – he's really got a lot of debt. I don't know, but that's one reason. But, um, of course, we've never really had a, a president who's who's been a successful businessman first and then become president. I mean, I guess you could say George W. Bush had some, some business interests, but in general, presidents become rich because they're president. Like, hmm. President Obama starts off, he's just sort of a, a state senator in Illinois, and he starts running for president, and, and then he makes millions and millions of dollars off of the presidency, mm -hmm. right? So um, so in that case, it's it's easier to release your taxes when, when it's simpler like I that. I hate taxes. I hate, hate fucking but, taxes. You do your own taxes, Monica? Mm -hmm. Monica? You know, who does it? One of my mom's friends. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, you do your own taxes. Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. Legally, are you are you are you you're <laughs> truthful on it? Yeah. yeah. Ryan, do you do your own taxes? I do a lot of my own taxes. Yeah. yeah. I hate Turbo it. tax? Is that what you yeah. Do? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love tax season. That makes it so. What? Easy. Oh, I'm getting. Get up on that mic. I get a ten grand check every year. Oh, well, you're having too much money taken out. Exactly. <laughs> well, I don't but, you know it's it's a savings account basically oh uh, wow well. well, not really because you don't get interest for it right yeah, yeah, so yeah. If, if, yeah, you, but if you instead actually put it in a savings account like every paycheck you put 400 bucks into a, a savings account then you can get interest i'd spend it yeah you know I'm, i hear <laughs> you yeah yeah well i i don't do my uh, you of course you do your your own taxes right and my taxes are easy i mean it's, it's just uh you know, it takes about an hour. You get turbo tax, and I don't do anything. Com you know, as a teacher, you can you can if you buy some crayons or whatever, mm -hmm. you can write them off. But I don't I don't do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I bought some color pencils the other day. I didn't worry about it. Um, Come on, man. That's like that's like nine ninety five. Write that mm -hmm. shit off. Yeah, I guess I, guess I should. <laughs> but but every time I've tried to it do probably that, probably like all adds up, and you don't even know. Well, when when I itemize it though, when I try to do that, they say that no, you you would have made more money just doing the, yeah, the standard to, deduction. I tried to do the same thing, and it just screwed everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and that, but the cool thing is the IRS is so understaffed right now that, from what I understand, they they don't really have the resources to audit people, right? So, so you're saying uh, we can get away with tax fraud? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 don't do I it. I think that's what Chef is trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay's like, yeah, you're not gonna get away with it unless I mean, if you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, because you think about it, for somebody to come in and audit you. The federal government has to pay a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know whatever it is, twenty five thousand dollars or fifty thousand. So are they gonna audit me over five hundred bucks? Now, that being said, I, I try to be as honest as possible on my taxes. You know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Okay, but, then we're on the we're on the air here, so yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, totally sure. illegal and yeah. No, but you know, my, my my daughter is a is a teacher in in in, in first grade, so 
she spends shit tons of money on they have to decorate because you're, you're in high school you don't have to do that yeah, probably yeah I don't do any of that yeah, yeah well in your first oh, grade yeah. at school they gotta decorate everything and they gotta put up the you know right. different stations and charts and I mean it's it's a lot. Yeah. It takes her like a week to decorate it and pay, go out and pay, and they have to go pay for all that shit and they're expected to do it. I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, so it, it's kind of, kind of fucked up. But. but sometimes you have a nicer school who they'll support you with that. They'll say, Hey, what do you need? You need poster boards and stuff. And they'll, or they'll sometimes they have like you. a supplier. Room and then you yeah. Can just use what's in there. Yeah. But, but for the most, I mean, geez, back in the day at some schools, you know, teachers have to actually go and buy their kids lunches and, and you know, if a kid comes to school smelling, teacher goes and buys some soap and a sponge and, and you know tells the kids you don't do that, that now no not me <laughs> that's, what, that's what i like about working at a decent school high school yeah um that has you, some resources you don't, don't have, have to watch the kids yeah. i don't have to yeah, yeah exactly yeah. i don't have to feed them copy that just just teach them all right 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 yeah. right yeah you ever have to beat anybody <laughs> no we're not supposed to we're not supposed to do that anymore. oh yeah not yeah. supposed to i understand not, not but have you ever yeah, wanted yeah. to Ever wanted to? No. Why would I want to beat somebody? I've wanted to punch my kids in the face. Plenty. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but if somebody kids, else so. did it, you'd probably be upset. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I mean, you you really don't have that. Uh, you're really just more of. Um, when did you graduate from high school? Ahead. What year? Oh five. Oh five. Yeah. God well, damn. And and <laughs> my. Twenty sixteen. Sixteen. You. Ninety eight. Ninety eight. What about you, Jay? Or did you graduate? I'm oh, sorry, yeah. 1876. 76? 1876. <laughs> that was a good year. You look pretty good. Though. Yeah, you hold up pretty well. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what's the craziest shit you saw in high school? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's the craziest thing you ever seen in high school? Think about that for a second. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Remember that story? Craziest thing in high school. I mean, 9-11 happened when I was in high school, September mm-hmm. 11th. No, I'm mean, actually in the school, though. Oh. Uh, one of our one of the uh, English teachers was screwing uh, w- w- a girl in our class. Ended up marrying her after. Well, she did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. Well, uh, it didn't end up in jail, like or. Uh, it was a different time, I guess. But um, but it never really got out. Of course, our class knew about it. Uh, our our our. Uh, and it was your teacher? I didn't have him for a teacher, oh, okay. but. The girl obviously did, uh-huh. <laughs> several different kind of ways. But um. oh, um, so this girl made up a rumor that she was sleeping with one of the coaches. Oh boy! And he was married, and he like kept trying to deny oh, it and gosh. stuff. And he got into like a lot of trouble for it. He ended up uh, committing suicide. Mm. And it turns out, I mean, of course, she was lying. But yeah. Oh my god! Sad. Oh my god! That's terrible. I remember, I, I played. Football, basketball, I played all the sports, and our, our class was, uh, all my friends, we were really serious about sports. We were state champs in several different uh, categories, and um, so we would never party during season, we would never, but we had two weeks between, like, football and basketball, those two weeks we would party, and then we'd stop, and then we'd get right serious again about the sport, and uh in one year, uh, I, I don't even remember what happened, but oh, um, we, we, we were in this thing called, it's called chapel, and the entire student body, every single morning, assembles there. And they talk about what's going to happen that day, they talk about the successes or whatever, it's about seven, eight, ten minutes, could be longer, depending on whatever. And then you break from chapel, and the headmaster addresses the, addresses the school. And um, so, you know, we're all... Uh, hanging out and I had a test that morning and, and my one of my my buddies took my books and it was an open book test right he took my books as a joke not knowing but just took them and hit them and put them in his locker and um, so now I'm going to the first class I don't have my books I don't have my notes and I'm freaking out and I was a terrible student and I I probably failed the, the test or the quiz or whatever it was and I'm pissed I still don't know where my books are and uh, and then I find out I was in my my dad taught culinary school in the afternoon and someone told me I said I still don't know where the fucking books are and someone told me hey Bruce took your books my my buddy and play basketball with and they're in his locker so um, we just got a shipment of fish in that day and so I took a salt shaker <laughs> and I filled it up with the all the juice from the corner of the of the, of the fish box and and I wrapped it in saran wrap. And I went up to the main office, and I and I uh, told the ladies, and, and I'm a son of a teacher, 
right? So, and, you know, it, I'm known, you know, whatever, but it's a pretty good size school. So I go and I say, you know what, Bruce took my books and he, and he, he took them forward, but I got this test, I gotta, I gotta get into his lock. Can you just give me his, his combination so I can get in there? And she said, yeah, sure. She wrote down the combination. She gave me the combination. I went to the locker and I got my books and I was right next to him, got my books and um, took out, put them in my locker and I took out stuff that was important, like jackets or whatever. I didn't want to ruin anything. And I plastered the, lo the locker with oh. fish juice. <laughs> <laughs> and I closed it, and it, and I go out the building, and I go across the street, and it's a I don't know, three four hundred yards to go back to my dad's class, and I'm not even got in back. I told my dad what I was going to do, and I got back in the class, and he's waiting for me in class. He said, "You can turn right around, and go back to the the headmasters, because because uh, apparently the whole whole level of the of the." Uh, of the of the floors stunk up fish. I mean, it might not have been a fresh box, whatever it was, but and and someone knew that I did it, oh <laughs> so I had to go back. <laughs> the whole wing smelled like fish. So. That's a little too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was that. I did have a I did have a math teacher um, who had this wooden stick and had a leather strap on it, and um, when people fall asleep, you know those desks that you just kind of slide into. They're not, you know, you. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, so he would go up and he'd take that stick and he'd hit underneath the, underneath the table and then whack it and the, and the person would wake up and almost fall over or whatever. So he did that to this one guy, you know, three, four times through the year. And so one day, this kid was having a bad day. He came in, the class hadn't started yet, the teacher wasn't there, and he came in, took that stick and he, and he opened up the window. It's like on the third floor. And he threw the stick out the window, shut the window. And so uh, uh, the teacher came in and, and went to go get the stick and it wasn't there and and everybody's freaking out <laughs> so he, he he kicked the kid out of school kicked him out expelled oh him God. yeah yeah you yeah. can do that back in the day yeah two week he had a two-week suspension and at the end of the year the kid made him a new wooden stick um in in wood class you couldn't just find the old one that he threw out no they he uh i, I they did but he made him a new one as a gift okay and, and, and you know varnished it and put a put a you know put a handle on it and shit yeah so that was that's a level of respect there's a couple boring stories there so so what else is going on what else uh, what's new what's we're going to talk about you and on the next show but everything going new year good for you chef yeah, yeah? everything's good yeah the kids are good yeah kids are great yeah yeah, yeah. right growing like weeds well that's the way to have it <laughs> well as long as if they're growing they're healthy right oh yeah what um what about the texans it's tomorrow it is tomorrow. Are they playing here in Houston? Monica, make sure you remember. They're, yeah, the, the Texans are in the playoffs, <laughs> and they're and they're playing tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Are, are they playing here in Houston? No, no, no. Oh, they're playing KC. Okay. Yeah. Should we make a prediction like we did for the Astros? Uh, well, are we all wrong? That didn't work yeah. out so well. All well. Of us, some of us said the Astros were going to win in four games. Some said six. Some said it's going to go to seven, and we'll win. But, uh, uh, was that the World Series, yeah. or was that the game before? Was no, it the World, it was World Series? Series. We yeah. All, yeah, we no, screwed that up, didn't we? Some of us are like, no, the Astros will win in about five or six, maybe. Yeah. I think that was our fault. Yeah, I think we might have been. Yeah, yeah. Best not to talk about it then. That's or, or to talk about uh, or jinx it. Well, you know steaks, right? So apparently in Kansas City they call it a KC strip steak. Have you heard mm -hmm. that? Yeah. In New York is it like a different steak or what is it? No, I mean it's just like the Manhattan. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what the KC steak is because I mean I've heard of it, but Jay, I've definitely seen the. Um, the Manhattan fillet, which is you could take the strip, cut the ends off, cut the fat cap off, and you, it's kind of like a fillet, but it's okay. more mar marbled. Okay, okay. So is I don't know what the KC is. Yeah, they call it the KC strip. See, I'm, I'm, my understanding is just a New York strip, and they just call it a KC strip. Yeah, those fuckers just trying to steal the. Yeah, that's, that's, that's names all it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they probably call. Um, wait, but Kansas City is not. It's not in Kansas because I made that mistake once. It's not actually in Kansas. Oklahoma? Or, or Missouri. Missouri? Yeah. yeah. Misery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, have a, I have a clip of uh, our, our coach. Do you see it on there, Coach O'Brien? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this. The uh, TMZ? Yeah, it's pretty serious stuff. Oh, he hurt somebody's feelings, I think. Yeah, he sure Let's did. Let's He's still going off. <laughs> the guy can't even hear him anymore. Well, watch how 
D Hop tries to pull him in. See number ten. Come on, coach. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can shut it up. That was that was a halftime of the. Uh, uh, they were losing like thirty-three to three, I think. Halftime of uh, Denver game, maybe, or something like that. Anyway, maybe so. it was the. Um Baltimore, right? No, it was know? it was Denver or anyway, it doesn't make a difference. It was this year though. It was just recently, and so so a, a fan uh, uh, grabbed it and sold it to TMZ. So they're doing all right. So they paid for their Christmas. Holiday. But it looks like it was somebody who was inside the. the it sure does, yeah. yeah. But it was an inside job. I heard it on the radio that it was done. They have like cameras in the tunnel. Done by the fan. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how that got out. I'd like to know how that... They said it was recorded by Probably a fan. Probably someone who, like, works there. Mm, good stuff, though. So what do you think? I think that's uh, a little outrageous. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it. Fuck it. I think it's I'm, I'm okay with it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people get crazy about all kinds of things. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports especially, so... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, that, that's their whole life. You know, you go in there. And I, I get it. I get it. So so what are we going to do? Are we going to win this game? Or what? What's the spread? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. See uh, who's favored. Uh, I'm oh, sure I KC. I guess that's my job now to look at. I would up. imagine Kansas City's gonna uh, win. Yeah. KC Texans favorite, unless something happens, you know, something weird. They got some people back. Um, Kansas City's a 9.5 point favorite. Wow. Ooh, up two from the you know, under 51. Yeah, but I mean they've got a couple people who are that might be injured worth a, and that might be worth a bet to cover nine points in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So if they only if they beat us by a touchdown, you end up winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what you're trying to? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. We we're so terrible in the first half. I don't know what. It, but Texans, hey, they're in the playoffs, so they won the first game. What the hell? Um, yeah. That's about all I got, other than Prince Harry. And, oh yeah. And, and uh, well, I am a Canadian, and so. What? It does concern me the the, the monarchy. Ah. Uh, 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 I, I was born in Canada. You didn't know this? Very good. Oh okay. Well yeah. You didn't tell me. Yeah, and, and I really like. No, I'm sorry. I really like the monarchy. I'm a, I'm a monarch. I never, I, I never realize how far that spreads. Right? I mean, it's very important. Yeah. I mean, um, how many countries does that do, do they um, preside over? Does the uh, the crown? Well, so they they have what's called the Commonwealth, which are all the countries, basically every country in the world where people speak English. You know, so Australia, about half the countries in Africa, a couple countries in Central and South America, entire North America, several countries in Europe. I mean, there's there's a lot of that one small island of people went around the world, and and they had their glory days where they said the sun never set on them, right? The, the sun was always shining mm-hmm. on the British flag somewhere in the world, whether it was Hong Kong or whether it was, and 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 not only the language, but the the culture as well, the the whole Western way of thinking. I mean, our entire legal system is based on English common law and mm-hmm. precedent, and there's so many things that in, in our federal government that are not written down on paper, like when the Supreme Court um, knocks down a law or whatever, that's not even in the Constitution. That's that's British common law, or, or it's or it's sort of a residue from that. So it, it had a huge influence. Um, and the great thing about having a monarchy, so think about it like this, right? We have the President of the United States. He's the he's the um, Commander in Chief of the military. He's also the chief executive of the country. He's also the figurehead. He's sort of the face of the country as well. Mm. And that creates a lot of problems because um, presidents come and go every four years, every eight years. Um, there's a tradition at the start of the, the baseball season, the president throws out the first pitch at, at the um, Washington Nationals game, right? Uh, but if it's a president who's not popular in D.C., and Republicans are not popular in D.C., they'll get booed, right? Mm. Um, and, and so it's nice having a figurehead who's the queen, mm who's outside of politics, no, she's not a part of any party, so when she shows up to the opening of a museum or something, everybody can clap, everybody can support her. Mm. They're not supporting any particular... Uh, so, so they have what's called the firm, which is the whole family where the queen has her kids and her grandkids and her great-grandkids who go around the world, and if there's a charity event in Canada or even, even in Brazil, you know, a place like that that's not really um, a British place... They, they have a lot of respect for the for the monarchy and it's it's one of the few, yeah, it's huge. few it's traditions a, yeah, that are sure. still still left. So when you have, you know, Prince Harry and he goes and marries an actress and I never, I don't know if you saw the show Suits. I really like that show. You know, I like lawyer shows, but she was an actress in that show and now 
now Prince Harry and his wife are deciding that, you know, the the, the people of, of Britain spent millions of dollars for them to, you know, they had their wedding and for them to travel and all that. Now they're saying they're going to step aside. Um, that's kind of sad in a way, but I hope they get I hope they get banished. I hope they get exiled. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I really do. <laughs> that's what you're asking because it's like, hey, if you don't want to play the game, I mean. Think about how many women around the world would have loved to be a princess, yeah, right? Yeah. And so she shows up, and she's like, yeah, this isn't for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, It's crazy what's going on. You ever watched The Crown? Yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, it's crazy. Have you ever seen The Crown? Yeah, I've watched all of it. Yeah, I mean, Really? Yeah, I've seen it all. So it's, it's not that unheard of for them to be leaving. I mean, you look at the queen's uncle. Yeah, because Charles... You know, yeah. he was supposed to be king, and then he abdicated he stepped the out. throne. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he because he married a, he married a, an American woman. Exactly. Yeah. Who was exactly. divorced? Yeah. I think it's the same exact thing as, as right. history repeats itself. Yeah. And he sure. and and he was basically kicked out, cut off once he did that, and that Exiled, was yeah, that he, was the end of he that. Was banned from the country. And the thing with with Prince Harry though is that he's not really in line for the throne anymore. No, no. You know, his brother's going to be king and then his brother's kids are going to be king. Yeah. Right? So so it's not like he's got anything to really no um, Fs given. Yeah. It's like why? It's like just enjoy your life, just be rich, travel the world. If it makes you feel good to be a part of some charities and stuff like your mom did, go for it, mm. you know? But when you get tired of the media or whatever, just just hide. Go back in your castle. Spend your money. It's <laughs> yeah. got 50 rooms in a damn thing for Christ's sake. He's yeah. always been the bad boy anyways, too. I mean, Yeah, yeah. Didn't he get caught when he was doing a bong hit, wasn't it in the yeah, college? Sniffing vodka or whatever, trying so he can get drunk faster. I don't know. Well, I saw one where he was he was he dressed up as Hitler for Halloween. Oh shit! <laughs> Stay classy. Yeah, and and of course, in the British family, I mean, his own his own grandmother was had had her house bombed by by the Nazis, right? So it, it was kind of it was kind of offensive. But then what what they did was he apologized for dressing like Hitler. And then his dad took him to a couple of concentration camps in, in Poland, and they did the whole, like, apology tour. Oh, Jesus. Where he's, man. like, looking all sad and visiting the concentration camps. Um, Probably just then, went in, took the pictures, and went out. Yeah, well, yeah, like, like a publicity stunt, what you're saying, yeah. And then, and then he, he was in the military, because all the royal men have to be in the military, so I think he was flying copters or, or he was yeah. doing something in Afghanistan yeah. and and the thing is they they didn't want to tell people where he was in Afghanistan because that would be a target like you can capture the prince right so um he was in Af- and, and then at the time I think there were some naked pictures of him that went out <laughs> well, of, of Prince Harry yeah when he was in his dorm room I, th- I thought for sure he was doing a bong hit too or smoking yeah, a there was all or sorts of stuff but, but I remember with the naked pictures when that went out all these, all his friends in the military started taking naked pictures of themselves and uh, putting, <laughs> putting them out too to say like we stand with our our brother in combat. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, good on him on that. No. Well, there you go. It's uh, the start of a new episode for 2020 of the Unplugged. We have um, we have a couple of comedians we've been talking to. I know Eric's been busy and traveling around and family things, so not sure if he'll be back. But we miss him if he's listening. Uh, we miss you, Eric. And we have a couple other comedians here in Houston that. Hopefully, we'll be coming in next month, so we look forward to having some fun with that. So if you're listening, make sure that you keep on listening and um, stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be kind of fun. We're going to try, and that's one of, one of the things I opened up with, that we're focusing on some cool things for 2020, So and that's one of them. So if you listen to the uh, Recipe Unplugged, don't forget we have the Recipe Celebrity Secrets. You have to download that one uh, separately. Make sure you go there and do that. So I also want to thank uh, our sponsors, the Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. And uh, we have another sponsor coming up this year as well. So Escoffier School of Culinary Arts is a really super cool uh, school if you want to um, do an online uh, course and get your get your uh, education that way. That's one of the best culinary schools in the country for that, and they have a great system for that. So thank you guys for trusting us with the show. And uh, also Ace Way Incorporated owner uh, Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo's a really special guy, and he does a good job for us. And uh, we appreciate you uh, trusting us with the show as well. So that pretty much wraps up another show, uh, episode of The Unplugged. I want to thank you guys for coming in, Jay, Monica, and Aaron. Thank you for coming in, and, and we're soon to get to the chef. So uh, th- appreciate you coming in and on time. So remember you're special, you're great. Make an impact on someone's life today. See you next time. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I, I never know which one I can say.
I think his game his game management sucks, and I don't think he should be playing calling the plays. That's just me. But because now he's the general manager, right? I mean, so he's doing that. And